So this was my first podcast back in 2022 and really brought a lot of good energy this week. Uh, those of you that don't know, I had an article published last year in Massage Magazine where I basically talked about why massage therapists and quality hands-on soft tissue treatment is the key to solving the pain pill epidemic. Did a lot of research about the industry, what's going on, and really wanted to motivate and show massage therapists that they are the key give some insights of like what happened when massage was deemed non-essential, the COVID lockdowns, what's going on in the industry and everything like that. And I wrote a really good article and also talked about why, why physical therapy and chiropractic are inferior treatments when it comes to soft tissue treatments. Got it published, but during the publication process, a lot of the main issues were taken out and the whole gist of the article was changed and didn't get the full idea of like, the true purpose of massage therapists being primary conservative care treatment specialist. And I wanted to make a podcast talking about that and really show like what's holding back the massage therapy industry, why it was deemed non-essential and is it doomed to be forever non-essential? So I shared a lot of insights about writing that article, what I see as an outsider, what's going on in the profession and give you some action steps to really get yourself and your mindset and your business and your treatments in the right direction so you can help more people stay the hell away from pain pills, injections and surgeries, which only make things worse. And probably after making this podcast, I will not be asked to write any more articles for Massage Magazine, but that's okay. I wanted to share my perspectives and I hope you enjoy the show. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Soft Tissue Revolution podcast, where we teach massage therapists a new treatment method that focuses on working smarter, not harder, allowing them to make well over $100,000 per year with less than 20 hours per week of time in the clinic. No gimmicks, just results. Dr. Matt Maggio here. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening to the podcast. It's my first episode of 2022. Took a three-week break during the travesty of the holidays, ready to get back at it. And wanted to bring some real fire um, this year in the podcast and really just start calling out some of the bullshit that's going on out there. Um, just in the treatment space, you know, I get more and more just disgusted and pissed off every single day when I see the amounts of like pain pill deaths and opioid deaths and things like that. And understanding that the conservative care model is just completely fucked and people aren't getting good treatment on the front end when they need it. And then they have to resort to bigger problems like those pain pills, injections and surgeries, which just destroys people's lives, fucks things up, all sorts of stuff. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I got a message the other day from someone that didn't like my swearing on the podcast. Uh, the podcast does have explicit. This is how I talk. If you don't like it, then you probably don't want to listen. Uh, I try to watch my language, but it doesn't really happen. So I am going to use some explicitives or however the hell you say that. So if that offends you, don't listen. But let's get right into it. Uh, forever non-essential. Who is the real villain holding back massage therapist? So... Last year, when was it? Towards the end of last year, I think it was like October or November, uh, I was approached um, by Massage Magazine based off a comment that I made on one of their posts um, about pain pills and why soft tissue therapy needs to be the primary treatment model out there. And they asked me to write an article. And I was like, shit, that's awesome. Yeah, I've never written an article directly towards massage therapists and one that's been published. I published a lot of other articles on injuries and things like that. And I was like super grateful and super excited to do this. Um, you know, being an outsider from the massage field, but also training massage therapists for the last two years um, into becoming soft tissue specialists, I had a lot of different perspective. And sometimes it's good to get an outsider perspective because you're so launched in there and you don't really know what to do. So yeah, I, I was all about writing that article. And I did a lot of research and put a lot of time and a lot of effort into what I wanted my message to be and how it was supposed to be. In all honesty, I had a really bad experience with it. And probably making this podcast, I'm never going to be allowed to write for a massage magazine again. Um, that's okay. Um, but I want to get this message out there and really share what happened because I submitted this article. I understand during the editing process and things like that, things need to be cut out. But the entire gist and the entire like motivation and the insights of the article were completely changed and I wanted to get my name out there, but in all honesty, I kind of lacked a little bit of integrity and I should have said, no, I didn't like those changes and I wanted to keep them. So 
I want to go through what happened with that and what it really made me understand of like, who's really holding massage therapy back? Who are the villains out there? Who's like keeping this from being a primary treatment modality? There's a lot going on there. So I started off with writing the article and the, the, the original title of the article was why massage therapists are the key to solving the pain pill epidemic. That was my title. My title was changed to are massage therapists helpful in the pain pill epidemic? Like see the change there? Like the original one was why massage therapists are the key to solving the problem. And it got switched to like, maybe they are. That's just like reductionalist and just like weak thinking. And that right there, I should have been like, no, I don't want to do that. Number two was, and I do this all the time and people accuse me of like bashing physical therapists, chiropractors, and be like, your, your shit doesn't really work. It doesn't really do a whole lot. And this is coming from somebody that spent over, what, four years of his life getting a chiropractic degree over $150,000. And I realized, you know, it doesn't really do a whole lot of anything. And don't even get me started on physical therapy. If you think that you're going to fix somebody's injury by just taking them through some exercises and doing a bunch of shit and you don't get your hands on that, that's not the case. So I made that clear in the article that those treatment modalities are inferior to quality hands-on soft tissue treatment. Not just I'm not just saying just basic massage therapists. I'm talking about like quality hands-on soft tissue treatment, true soft tissue specialists. And that was changed. All that was taken out. And I was told by the editor that I needed to play nicer and that all therapies and all professions should get along because there's a place for everything. I'm like, no, that's complete bullshit. That's not the case. If that was the case, then we wouldn't have a fucking pain pill problem. We have a pain pill problem because the conservative care model sucks because people end up at like PTs and chiros that don't do much of anything. And now that problem doesn't get fixed. It gets a lot worse and it goes from there. And they don't look at massage therapists as that primary injury treatment modality. They look at it as like a secondary type of thing. And then the last thing that we, I was really big on was the whole idea of like massage therapists being deemed non-essential when COVID hit. Like that should, that should just suck. That should hit you and you'd be like, that's fucking bullshit. Like we were deemed, not we, I'm not a massage therapist, but I was a chiropractor and my physical therapist friends, we were allowed to keep our clinics open. Why the fuck were we allowed to keep our clinics open, but massage wasn't? So I really talked about that and how like there were even people out there in the profession that were like, yes, we need to, we need to shut down. Um, this isn't safe and all that. Like those people need to get the fuck out of the profession because it is essential. It does need to do that. And I wrote a very scathing um, critique of what was going on in the profession, how they just, they just bent over and took it. They're just like, yep, yeah, we're not essential. We'll close up. I'm like, fuck, you didn't even fight that. And you didn't even have your associations fight that. So that was all taken out of the article. Um, the editor basically said that I didn't understand, you know, the germ effects of COVID and all that. Like, whatever, I'm not going to go on a COVID rant, but whatever. So those were things that were changed. And it really got me thinking. I'm like, man, what's really holding massage back? And I'm like, it's the own industry itself. It's like the preconceived notions of like, what to do. Um, not standing up for themselves, not providing true solutions, getting stuck in all of that. So these are the problems that I see, you know, number one is unfortunately, and you might be listening to this and you might be really good at what you do and you might specifically fix injuries and provide more of a therapeutic type of thing. But inherently the public sees massage as like a service-based type of luxury. And you know, you got all those stigma bullshits out there with sexual favors and stuff like that. That's all bullshit anyway. And it sucks that it's in there, but it's in there. That's what the society looks at it as. It looks at it as service-based luxury. So when the government looked at it, they're like, hey, who do we got to shut down? Shut down massage. They're not essential. Fuck, that sucks. Uh, number two is just the crazy people in the profession. I have it in the chiropractic profession as well, but it's those intuitive healers, those those people that are just like all woo-woo, hippie, dippy, bullshit, whatever. Hey, I'm big on like spiritual and stuff like that too, but you're not going to fix somebody's problem by just like tapping on it and gently rubbing it and stuff like that. And these people are like, I'm an intuitive healer, all that bullshit. And they're out there and they add to the stigma of things that are going on. Number three... The schools aren't adequate and neither is the training. I mean, we know this with all schools, like when they get you through school, they're not teaching how to crit critically think, how to solve problems, how to like really get to the root cause of what's going on. They really just want to get you enough to pass the boards. Then you go and take like certifications and things like that. And the problem with the certification model and training is it's kind of like, 
there's two sides to it. One side is like, just do this treatment. And this is, it doesn't matter about assessment, just go in there and treat the fascia or treat the psoas or treat the subscap, treat this one thing. They don't really teach you how to like critically think and figure it out. On the other side is like the very assessment and very heavy assessment. Like you, you spend an hour or two hours going through the client, figuring out exactly what's wrong, but then you never have time to actually fix the problem. So it needs to be somewhere in the middle and the schools aren't preparing you for that at all. And lastly, just the associations and the groups, like the fact that they took and they're like, oh yeah, just shut us down. We're non-essential. Like that's, that should sting. That should piss you right the fuck off. And this also requires you to take shit from other practitioners, especially chiropractors and physical therapists. They'll bash soft tissue treatment, say all this stuff. And you get that with the clients where they like, they continue to go to these practitioners, like the PT or the chiro, and they're not any better. And you ask them like, hey, are you better? And they're like, no, but they just keep going because they look at them as primary care um, injury people, not you. So they're like, well, I go to you and you help me out the most, but I'm going to keep going to the Cairo as well. And the PT, even though it's not working, like there's a disconnect in there and that's, what's happening. The problem is the industry is itself, like the stigmas, the crazy fuckers out there, school's not preparing you. And then of course you get looked at as a secondary therapy or massages, relaxation, or like a luxury. And instead it needs to be essential. Quality hands-on soft tissue treatment is the most essential treatment out there. So what do you do? What are the action steps? First off, don't take this shit anymore. Don't be labeled as non-essential. Like that's fucking awful. And when I hear shit like that and people took it, I'm just like, man, that's bad. So what are your action steps? One first is don't buy into the COVID hysteria. Like I haven't talked a lot about my views on COVID and I'm not going to really go there, but don't buy into this shit again because they're going to try to pull shit again. You can see that they're going to try to shut shit down. They're going to try to go in there. And if you continue to participate in the madness and the, the fear mongering and all this type of shit, and you're posting pictures of you with like your mask on and all this stuff, you're just going to scare people even more. And they're going to shut you down again. If you're in an area where you think that you're going to get shut down again. They've done it again. Get the fuck out of there. It's not productive. It's not going to help you get out of there. You saw the writings on the wall. Number two, decide what you want to be. Do you want to be a relaxation person? Which is totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Hey, go get a massage, be relaxed, whatever. Stress relief, all that kind of shit. But that's not solving problems. Decide, do you want to be a relaxation person or you want to be a therapeutic person that actually solves problems? If you're one of those people that you want to solve problems, you want to be a therapeutic, actually solve problems, come along the journey with me. That's all I'm talking about. So if I offended you and you're a relaxation person and you help people unwind with stress, that's fine. Like, I don't care what you do but you ain't fucking fixing anybody. And people do need stress relief, but anyone can do stress relief, but not a lot of people can actually fix problems. Number three, stop taking shit from PTs and Kairos. Their treatments are inferior. Do not let them talk down to you just because they have a lot of education, which doesn't really do anything. At the end of the day, the results are the certification. If you're the one fixing people, take fucking credit for it and don't be afraid to be like, hey, that other shit doesn't work. Soft tissue treatments are better. I have a lot of stuff on my YouTube channels where you can educate clients about the superiority, um, the effectiveness of soft tissue treatment and why those other modalities don't do much of anything. And in some situations, they actually make the problem a lot worse. And once again, this is coming from someone that has a chiropractic degree that doesn't do any adjustments and only does soft tissue treatment because that's what works the best. Lastly, and this is the hardest one for everybody, <sighs> commit to being excellent. Solve people's problems. Get fucking great. Get so goddamn good that people can't ignore you. Speak up. Educate your clients. Show them how you can be a solution for their problem so they don't have to go down that horrible path of pain pills, injections, and surgeries. So that's all I got. I'm trying to keep these a little shorter because I can rant a little bit and go from there. But take an inventory of what's going on, what's going on in your profession, what's going around around you, what people are talking about, and really start solving problems. Learn how to critically think. If you like it, share the show with other people that you know it can help. We're growing. We're getting downloads from all over the place. Go grab our free training. It's the first step to getting you on the path to becoming a true solutions provider. And lastly, come learn with us. I got seminars coming up here starting in March of 2022. All the information's on our website. All the links are in the show notes. 
Don't get stuck in that label of being non-essential. Never again. Don't ever let anyone call you non-essential. And if you sit there and take it, you're part of the problem. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.